So here I've drawn our double slit experiment, and uh, we're going to talk about how we can get at some other important quantities from this experiment just by knowing the geometry of our system, and we're going to use some approximations to do that. So here we have our double slit over here, distance between my two slits where the light's coming through and diffracting. The distance there is little d. The distance between my slits and my screen where the diffraction pattern appears, appears that's distance x, okay? And then I've got my central bright fringe in the middle, and then all of my other um, higher order bright fringes on either side of my central point. Now each one of these bright fringes in the double slit experiment, they're all separated by the same distance. But the intensity of those bright dots diminishes as you go away from the central point. So um, these, this graph that I've drawn on top of here is the intensity of those points. So we've got the most intense point in the center, and as you go off to the first order fringes on either side, the intensity of those dots diminishes, and then to the second bright fringe on either side, the intensity of those diminishes as well as we keep on going away from the central point, okay? And then we can draw a little triangle, which I've done right here, where I've got the base of my triangle is the distance between my slit and my screen, and then the um, vertical part of my right angle triangle here is going to be this distance right here, which I'm gonna call Y1 here. That distance is the distance between consecutive fringes, or it's the distance between my M is equal to zero and Z M equal one bright point, okay? I'm gonna call that Y1. And then we've got my angle theta right here inside this right angle triangle. Now, tangent of this angle theta is equal to the opposite side, so what I'm calling y here, divided by x. So tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, so we've got tangent of this angle theta here is equal to y over x. All right, so we're going to use this relationship to help us here in a minute. Now, remember that our equation for constructive interference, these bright points for our double slit experiment, that equation is m lambda equals d sine theta. So if we know the geometry of the system, there are a lot of ways we can arrange this double slit equation to give us any of these following quantities. So d, which is our slit spacing, x, which is our distance between the, the screen and my slit. Uh, we could rearrange it to solve for theta, the angle between the center bright point and where that m equal one or m equals two bright point is and so on. Uh, we can also find y sub m here, or the spacing between any of these bright points. And then we can also find lambda, the wavelength of our light source, or the wavelength of our laser. We can find any of these quantities by carefully rearranging and substituting things into this equation here, okay? Remember, this is our equation for constructive interference for um, double slit, so our double slit experiment. Now by looking at this equation, we see, okay, I've got m, I've got the wavelength, I've got d, I've got angle theta, but these quantities x and y do not appear in my equation for constructive interference from a double slit experiment. We can get them in there by using something called the small angle approximation. Okay, so over here, we just already thought about the geometry of our system, and we said the tangent of my angle is equal to y, our spacing between the bright fringes, divided by x. Now, with the small angle approximation, and that means small is um, any angle less than or about equal to 10 degrees, okay? For the small angle approximation, we can say that the tangent of my angle theta is 
really very similar to the sine of my angle theta. So I've got sine on this equation right here. Now remember we said that tangent of theta from the geometry of our system is y over x. So I can use my small angle approximation to say that sine of theta is approximately tangent of theta, and our tangent of theta, I'm going to put the little sub m here, equals y sub m over x. So putting these little subscripts on here generalizes it for any bright point away from the central point. So if I want to think about the first bright point away from the center point, I'm going to use m equals 1. So this would be sub 1, sub 1. I'd use m equal 1 here. If I'm thinking about the second bright point, this would be sub 2, sub 2. I'd use m equals 2 in this equation here. So with my small angle approximation, which doesn't appear on your equation sheet, so you might have to figure out how to use it at some point on a future exam or homework assignment. With this small angle approximation, we can substitute this ym over x in here for sine theta. So we can say that m lambda is now equal to d, and where I see sine theta, I could replace it with y sub m over x. Okay, And then if I solve this, I could solve it for anything that you see right here. But let's go ahead and solve it for y sub m. So if I solve this equation for y sub m, I see that y sub m equals m lambda x all over d. So I can calculate what the separation between these bright points should be if I know the wavelength of my light source, if I know the distance between my slit and my screen, and if I know the spacing between my um, slits, or if I know why I can solve for any one of these other um, pieces of information. Okay, So if I'm thinking about the first bright um, fringe or the first bright point away from m equals 1, I would use 1 right here for m. And this distance y1 right here is what I'd be looking for. If I'm looking for the second bright fringe away from the central point, I'd use m equals 2 here, and then my distance y, that would be this distance from my central bright point to the second fringe, and so on. We just finished using the small angle approximation in order to derive this equation which tells us um, how far away our bright points or our bright fringes are from the center point if we know some um, of the other uh, physical quantities of our system. So we're going to use this equation now in order to help us solve this problem. So, you know, whenever I'm working through a problem, I do a lot of things that I don't always explicitly point out to you, but I'm always modeling um, best practices for solving problems. And one of those best practices is always writing down the knowns and unknowns, drawing your diagram, and then figuring out which equations are you going to use to solve the problem. So here we're going to read the story problem, and as I do that, I'm going to write down the knowns in my system. So we have a screen. This is my screen here where my bright points are going to appear. It's separated from a double slit source over here by 1.2 meters. So x is 1.2 meters. And the distance between my two slits, d right here, is 0 0.03 millimeters. d is equal to 0 0.03 millimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and write that in, um, in meters. So 0 0.03 millimeters, that's the same thing as 0 0.03 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, because 1 millimeter is 10 to the minus 3 meters. So I'm going to write it like this, OK? And then I know, let's see, it's going to ask us about the second order bright fringe. So the second order bright fringe, that's m equals 2, that's this one right here, my second bright point away from the central bright point. 
is measured to be 4.5 centimeters from the center line. That distance I'm going to call y sub 2, and y sub 2 is equal to 4.5 centimeters, and that's also the same thing as 0 0.045 meters. Okay, so those are my knowns, and that's just the first two sentences here. And then it's going to ask us to determine the wavelength of light. So what's the wavelength of light of my light source given um, all of these geometric components of my system? And I've measured the distance between my central bright point and the second fringe, the second order bright fringe, okay? Now to solve this problem, we're looking for the wavelength lambda. We can use our uh, equation for constructive interference for our double slit experiment, and that's m lambda equals d sine theta. So we've got the wavelength in there, that's what we're trying to solve for. Um, we know d, we know we're looking for the second bright point, okay, but we've got the sine theta here. So what do we do about this sine theta? Well, in the previous segment, we showed how we could use the small angle approximation in order to say that for this experiment, sine theta is approximately tangent theta, which is equal to y over x. So here where I see sine theta, I can replace that with y, I'm gonna say y sub m over x, that equals m lambda. All right, so now I can solve this equation for lambda, that's what I'm trying to solve for. So lambda, our wavelength, is equal to d y sub m over m times x, okay? So wavelength equals d, that was the spacing between our slits, and that was 0 0.03 times 10 to the minus three meters y sub m, that's the distance between my center point and the second bright point here, and we said that that was 0 0.045 meters, and then we're going to divide that by m, the order of our bright fringe. Our problem says we've got the second order bright fringe, so we're going to use 2, and then we multiply that by x, so that's our distance here between the slits and the screen, and that's 1.2 meters. Okay, so you saw earlier, we went ahead and sw switched from millimeters to centimeters over to meters, because we, we gotta have <coughs> all of these units to be the same in order to get our answer in the appropriate unit. Okay, so I could cancel one of these meters here with that meter there, so then my wavelength is equal to the wavelength of my light source is equal to 5.625 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. So usually we want to report these wavelengths of light in nanometers. So how can I change from meters to nanometers? Well, I'm going to multiply this by a conversion factor. I know that in one meter, there's 10 to the 9 nanometers. Or you could also multiply it by this conversion factor times there's, um, in one nanometer, there's 10 to the minus nine meters, okay? You could do either one of these and your answer would end up the same. We've got the meters cancel here. If you do it here, meters cancel. And then we find that the wavelength of light is 562.5 nanometers, okay? So just by knowing the spacing between these bright points, using our small angle approximation, our double slit um, bright maxima interference uh, equation, we're able to figure out what was the wavelength of light from our light source.